What's up everybody? It's Chris at Lion Punch Forge. Today we're talking about regulators. No, I'm not talking about Nate Dog and Warren G. I'm talking about these little guys. Specifically today about inert gas regulators for this guy. Oh hey. How are you? Yeah. When you buy a pole arc welder and it requires a shielding gas like argon, argon is an inert gas, which means it does not react to uh, fire or flame. It shields, it pushes the oxygen out of the weld area so that you can have a clean weld without the oxygen, the oxides, and all that kind of fun stuff. So, real quick on shielding gas, it Kind of, uh, mm. screw it. Let's do it without gas. Suppose I should turn it on first. All right, now that I have the power turned on to the welder, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It's turning on. What we're going to do is we're going to do a weld with and without argon and we're going to show you the difference. So the best thing, the best way I describe argon, it kind of pushes out all the oxygen and all the nastiness that could like uh, corrupt your weld and it gives it a nice warm supportive hug. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a weld with and a weld without argon to kind of show the difference. Um, so the Orion uses argon, like I said, and it's fed to the welder through a rubber tube. And what we're going to do is talk about two different regulators. One that I got from my general welding supply store and the other one I got directly from Orion. The difference is, is that one is going to be a high flow and the other is going to be a low flow. The low flow comes from Orion and it's best suited for the Orion welders. The reason for that is that it only requires maybe uh, 7 to 10 PSI generally for a weld to be nice and cleaned out and, and surrounded by the argon. So a high flow goes, for example, this one is my Orion and it goes up to right around 30 being the limit, 30 PSI being the limit. Um, the nice kind of happy areas between uh, 6 and 10 or 7 and 10 is like I said. This one though goes all the way up to 80 PSI and it's uh, incrementally less adjustable because it has a larger range or a higher volume of gas that can flow through and be useful for this regulator. So this is like for a uh, a garage TIG or a garage MIG welder uh, for their argon gas. Not super ideal for the Orion system. So let's go ahead and get you guys zoomed in on a weld. Um, I think we're going to use, uh, we'll use whatever's available, but we'll probably use copper. Copper's a good one because it has a lot of oxides in it. Um, and if it's not super clean, then it's going to oxidize and not work exactly like it should. So we'll go ahead and use copper, I think. All right, so I have my grounding attachment here. I keep them wound up and Velcroed and hung up on a hook next to me because I got a lot of them. Um, this keeps them nice and clean, nice and organized and out of the way. You don't have cords and stuff all over the place. So I'll plug him in and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a higher power weld probably around 6.24 kilowatts at a square wave. Um, that's going to give me a lot of kind of uh, opportunity to show what's happening. Focus in and weld. So as you can see right here, I have a big clouded area of 
oxides and nastiness from that weld. So I'm gonna do it one more time. The welder's gonna tell me there's no gas pressure. You can still use it, it's just not ideal. So you have all that nastiness showing up from my weld right here, right here. See that big round circle there? I'm gonna keep my settings the same, but I'm going to put on the regulator and turn the gas flow to about seven or eight PSI, like we said. So there's, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our gas tube to the back of the welder, which is simple. It just press it in and then with the uh, regulator, it's the same thing. You got a little, right, let's zoom out here. We got a pressure fitting here press that in and your gas is hooked up. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna do is test the area with a little bit of soapy water and make sure you don't have any leakage around the tube or leakage around your threads to your tank. Now, argon is an inert gas, so it's not going to explode, but anytime you deal with any kind of gas, you wanna make sure that your regulator's on tight, you don't have any leaking, and you take precautions for using those pressurized tanks. So this guy is, like I said, directly from Orion. However, this guy was from my welding supply store and they typically don't use that press fit tubing like Orion does. They use this little nasty barbed fella that doesn't really fit on the tube and there's adjusters and more connections and like I said, higher flow. Uh, these work, but don't recommend them. If you're gonna buy a regulator for an Orion, go directly to Orion, get what they're offering for their machines. Um, like I said, you can go to the welding supply store, you're just gonna have to jerry-rig some of this stuff to work exactly for you. You're better off going with the Orion. Now they're both made by Victor. Victor is a well-known and trusted regulator company. This one is made for Orion, for their welders. So, there you go. Let's go ahead and hook those up and I'll be back in a second. All right, we're back. So this was our first weld without gas. You see the cloud of oxides and nastiness around it from the copper. Now I have my gas hooked up and I have uh, about 10 PSI. So. We're gonna go ahead and make a weld right next to that across the line and our weld settings are exactly the same. We're gonna compare the cleanliness of that weld. So here I am here, move over. So you can see the weld is much cleaner and it doesn't have that pocket of nastiness around it. So I'm gonna hit that one more time and what I want you to listen for is that gas flowing as soon as I touch the electrode to the metal. Oh, we had a gas malfunction. So our gas pressure right now is too high. And we're gonna go ahead and fix that. So we just fixed it. You see the outside area that weld? We just uh, welded that without gas. And what happened was the same thing, is that that cloud of nastiness appeared. So we're gonna do the same thing over that with gas this time. So we just did a stream of welds. Now copper's a little bit dirty, but we have a nice clean versus nasty oxide. So we'll get it close up here. So the one over here is my stream of clean welds. And then the one over here is my couple dirty welds. And what you'll notice when I hopefully zoom in on this 
is that the metal is kind of gnarly looking it's not clean and smooth and what you're going to end up happening is with the argon cleaning up that area taking the oxygen out you're going to get a cleaner weld smoother weld and it's going to be stronger because of that so I know it's a real quick one it doesn't always apply to everybody but if you are going to be doing any kind of welding and you want to skimp on maybe hooking up the gas the gas is there for a reason it keeps everything nice and clean you have stronger smoother cleaner welds and it's really not that hard I have my argon tank right by my welder so I can just turn the gas on when I'm ready turn it off when I'm done and then just uh, go I think I use a 40 cubic foot tank and it lasts me consistently welding for probably four or five months but I weld a lot if you have any questions about Orion welders contact me let me know I've had mine for a while I use it for tool prototyping uh, jewelry I welded titanium copper stainless steel tool steel uh, silver I played around with a little bit of gold um, really nice I like them better than the laser because I can still do accurate welds and it's a little bit more versatile than a laser I in in my opinion and for for my uses um, the model I have is a 200 i3 and yeah it's been a great addition to the shop and uh, a lot of fun watch for it in videos coming up soon I've got a lot of production jewelry I've got some custom orders I've got to make so I'm gonna do some videos on using the Orion welder to fulfill some of my customs also recently I did an earring back repair on a stone that was already set and all I needed to do was take that little back clamp my electrode on there I like to keep a thing of scrap silver next to my welder so I can find a similar size uh, metal piece of silver or whatever I'm welding to slowly work up my weld strength so that when I'm doing a repair I have my settings just right I don't necessarily want to guess I want to work up my weld strength so I did that with an earring back scrap that I had and then once I had the settings right clamped the stone and the, the stud in the little grounding clamp four little welds and I have a repaired earring back so really nice didn't have to take the stone out um, good times so if you haven't already check out limepunchforge.com I've got a lot of cool tools coming out next month I've got cool tools on the market right now and also a bunch of cabochons listed on the website so check them out I love you guys be amazing do something nice for somebody and we'll talk to you soon